Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie Channel. Hello everyone, we have our new topic in Science 8, which is all about the digestive system. This will be the fourth quarter topic and week one. This topic is a milk-based. For the most essential learning competencies, specifically you are expected to describe the parts and functions of the digestive system. Explain the ingestion, absorption, assimilation, and excretion, and discuss the nutrient deficiency, common digestive diseases, and the ways to prevent such diseases. We often hear the line, food is life, when we talk about food. So why do we really need food? Is it really essential to sustain life? When eating, have you wondered how food is digested in the body? Also, how are the nutrients transported all over the body? So in this module, we are going to discover how amazing the digestive system is and its job on the food that we eat. Organisms need food to survive. It fuels and gives organisms the energy to enable to carry out the different activities in a day. Food plays a vital role for organism survival. The body is composed of cells which are needed for energy, growth, and repair. In order to supply those things, food must be broken down for cells to use it. The food can be used once it is processed by the group of organs known as the digestive system. Food supplies the raw materials that enter in the digestive system through the mouth. Once it is inside the body, it will undergo processes performed by the different organs of the digestive system and then be changed into a material that can be used by the cell. Digestive system is responsible in digesting the food that we eat in the process known as digestion. It breaks down food particles to organic compounds that can be used by the cells in the body. Digestive system has two ways in breaking down food, the mechanical digestion and the chemical digestion. When the food is broken down into smaller pieces, through chewing, grinding, squeezing, and tearing, this is called the mechanical digestion. However, when the food is broken down with the help of chemicals and other substances to liquefy, it is called the chemical digestion. In addition, digestive system is composed of two groups. One group make up the gastrointestinal tract, which includes the mouth, esophagus, stomach, and intestine. The other group stores, release, and makes up chemicals that aids the further breakdown of food composed of the following. The pancreas, liver, gallbladder, and the salivary glands. Organisms classify their digestion through their digestive system. Mostly all animals have tube-like digestive system in which one end of the tube serves as a mouth while the other end serves as the anus. Complete digestion takes place when the food enters the mouth, passes a long tube, and then exit as feces or stool in the anus. However, incomplete digestion is when there is only one opening in the digestive system, in which this opening serves as the mouth and the anus of the organ.
The following are the parts of the digestive system. The first one is the mouth. This is where the digestion begins. Ingestion happens when the food is ingested or taken into the mouth. It is where the food is broken down into smaller pieces by chewing, tearing, and grinding the food and changing the food physically. After it has been broken down mechanically, the salivary glands now produce a chemical that will start breaking down the carbohydrates from the food. Now from the mouth, when you swallow the food, it propels down into the esophagus. Another part of the digestive system is the pharynx. It is a hollow tube inside the neck. It is about 5 inches long and also known as the truth. It is a part where it propels or moves the pieces of food down to the esophagus. Another part of the digestive system is the esophagus. This is a tube that creates a connection from the mouth to the stomach. It serves as the passageway of the food and where peristalsis begins. Another part of the digestive system is the peristalsis. It is an involuntary movement that involves alternating waves of contraction or strong motion that moves the food swallowed from the esophagus to the stomach until it reaches the small intestine. Another part of the digestive system is the small intestine. It is a chemical digestion mostly happens in this organ. It contains several digestive juices. The juices are responsible in digesting the proteins into amino acids and some digest carbohydrates into simple sugar. Another part of the digestive system is the stomach. It is a bag-like organ in the digestive system which is responsible in grinding and mixing the food together with the digestive juices or enzymes. Hydrochloric acid is released in this organ and converts the food into a soupy substance called chyme. It is the product of digestion in the stomach. The stomach wall has special cells that produce juice gastric juices these juices are responsible in the start of breaking down proteins the stomach works for about four hours then pushes the food into the small intestine Another part of the digestive system is the liver. It is the largest solid internal organ of the body. This organ secretes bile, which is a green liquid that breaks up fats into smaller droplets and serves as storage of nutrients. When bile is needed in the small intestine, it aids in digestion of fats, but if it is not delivered in the gallbladder. Another part of the digestive system is the gallbladder. It serves as a storage and concentration of bile. The bile is stored here until it will be needed by the small intestine for digestion of fats. Another part of the digestive system is the pancreas. It is a small sac found in the digestive system. This is a gland that is responsible in converting the food to fuel the body cells. It makes digestive juices each day during digestion. Its main function is to help digestion and is also vital in regulating blood sugar. This means that liver, gallbladder, and pancreas help the small intestine during the digestion of food. From the three organs, digestive juices are released to synthesize the food to get the nutrients from it. In the small intestine, absorption happens. The nutrients from the food will be absorbed by the bloodstream, which allows the circulatory system to take its responsibility in circulating and delivering delivering the nutrients throughout the body. The circulated nutrients will be now assimilated. Assimilation is the process where the nutrients delivered by the bloodstream reach the cell to provide them cell energy for growth and for repairs. When the bloodstream circulates, this includes the oxygen that is needed by the respiratory system. Another part of the digestive system is the large intestine. This organ gets the useful liquids from the 
undigested food. This is where dehydration and compaction of the indigested materials happen. This time, excretion will occur where this indigestible materials called feces will solidify and will pass through the rectum and exits through the anus. Reabsorption of water and salt also takes place in the digestive system. After all the processes, the excretory system takes its function where the waste of the digestive system will be eliminated. What is nutrient deficiency? Nutrient deficiency, or also known as nutritional deficiency, happens when our body does not receive or absorb necessary amount of nutrients from the food that we eat. This also means that the vitamins and the minerals in our body is not enough to let it function properly. This deficiency can lead to a variety of health problems. Last 2015, according to National Nutritional Survey, persistent problems on nutrient deficiencies affect Filipinos. The following are the common nutrient deficiency diseases. The first one is the iron deficiency. This happens when there is insufficient iron in the body. It is called anemia. When this happens, the body cannot produce enough red blood cells and enable to carry oxygen to the body that leads you to feel tired and experience shortness of breath. Another common nutrient deficiency disease is the zinc deficiency. This occurs when the body does not receive adequate amount of zinc to sustain its function. Zinc supports cell functions and is needed to make chemical reactions in the body to happen. This deficiency leads to appetite loss and poor immune system. It was revealed that zinc deficiency in the Philippines is a significant public health concern. Another common nutrient deficiency disease is the iron deficiency. This happens when the body does not have accurate amount of iodine. The body mostly abstains iodine from the diet. This may result into metabolic problems such as guiter and others. The following are the common digestive diseases. The first one is the constipation. It refers to infrequent bowel movement and the stall is difficult to pass and can happen for several weeks or even longer. Another common digestive disease is the diarrhea. It happens when a loose and watery stool comes out that can be present for days. It is resolved by the body's inability to absorb food. Another common digestive disease is the peptic ulcers. It refers to the painful sores inside the lining of the stomach or in the upper part of the small intestine. These ulcers are slow to heal and can even keep on returning. Another common digestive disease is the colon cancer, medically known as colorectal cancer, in which it involves the colon or the large intestine and the rectum. It is when there is a tumor growth in the lining of the large intestine or in the rectum. This indicates abdominal pain, change in bowel habits, and others. The following are the prevention of digestive system diseases. The first one is to drink lots of water. Water helps cleanse the entire digestive system. It also plays a role in efficiently helping the absorption of nutrients during digestion. Also, it nourishes and energizes the cell in the digestive tract. Another prevention of digestive system disease is to maintain a healthy diet. This means that being aware of the food you eat plays an essential role to have a healthy digestive system. Eating foods rich in fibers like vegetables and fruits, this help digestion. Remember, the food is where you get nutrients for the cell. Healthy food means healthy digestive system. Feed your body what is needs to be healthy. 
Another prevention of digestive system disease is to eat mindfully. This means paying attention and eating the food and slowly chewing and eating it. This is important for this is the part where we can break down properly the food into smaller pieces that helps the digestion. Another prevention of digestive system disease is exercise regularly. It promotes healthy digestion. It keeps the muscles of the digestive system moving that allows the food to pass through easily and quickly. It also helps the undigested materials to be easily excreted from the body. Thank you.